Yes. Uh, can we still talk to you? Do you need total indeed. focus? I can play and talk at the same time. <laughs> he's ambidextrous. Wow. Yeah, he's fine. <laughs> That's a lovely part about these games. You really get to, to dive into the strategy here. Uh, what tools are you giving us to conduct our large-scale work? So, uh, James is in command of Cao Cao, and he's got um, quite a varied army, um, and he'll be approaching the city. And we can see Lubu's welcoming committee coming up to the city Oof. gates right now. These big arrow towers either side, they're dotted throughout the city. They're nice defensive points for Lubu's forces to kind of hide near. Um, because it gives them that extra punch and, and protects the, 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 you know, from our forces as we're going in. But the idea is this siege has been underway for some time, so you'll see holes in the wall like this, and we're going to exploit those because we've brought some trebuchets with us, mm. which is everybody's favourite yeah, siege weapon, siege as we know. Weapon. Yep. <laughs> Apparently can fire 90 kilograms of weight over 300 metres. I've heard that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a constant surprise to me. Um, so yeah, we're, um, <laughs> we'll be throwing a lot of rocks at the wall, basically, with those guys. Um, and yeah, we've got quite a varied force. We've got a load of heavy spearmen, we've got um, some archers, we've got some cavalry, and uh, we'll have a wave of reinforcements coming in, uh, about a third of the way in, hopefully, um, led by the Zhao Hu brothers, who mm. are some more of these kind of legendary characters from the Three Kingdoms period. They were cousins of Cao Cao. And, um, and yeah, they'll be coming in with a ton of cavalry to help us smash through the defences. Seen a couple generals here. Is that who's on the front line? Yeah, that's right. More that's, than one general. Yeah, Sal himself. So he's, he's like the the overall army commander. But yeah, the one thing we're doing in support of you know this massive cast of, of kind of legendary heroes and characters. One one of the, one of the changes we've made in battle is that you can bring multiple generals into battle with you, and each of those has their own retinue. Because each Very each each general time um, has access to his own sort of suite of recruitments, the mm. stuff that he can recruit and that he supports and that suits his character cast kind of thing. So you've got a, um, uh, we've got a guardian character guy called Yuejin who, he's brought these guys, these are uh, heavy spear guard mm. um, and you can put them in this kind of tortoise formation. Um, so they're kind of slow, plodding, methodically moving towards the walls but they're well protected. They will get rains of arrows on them and very few of them go down because they've just, you know, they've locked, locked their shields and tied up the tortoise. So Total War Games are known for your beautiful, beautiful epic battles. Uh, the camera control is a huge thing for me because mm -hmm. I love zooming down in. How much camera control do we have in this Total War? Oh, as much as any other. You know, if you've got you've got that micro to macro kind of mm -hmm. scale shift that, that we that we've always done. Um, but you'll just it's worth getting in real close to stuff and, and, and seeing the detail, especially. Again, I, I just keep coming back to the characters because that's what this period is all about. Right. So Lu Bu here yes. in, in his courtyard is he's resplendent in his armour and he's actually he's on an epic mount. He's got a horse called Red Hair who was was it second or was it was it the fastest horse in the Three Kingdoms period? Second, second fastest. Horse. We got yeah. we kept getting corrected. <laughs> uh, we were brand manager so, when we got it wrong. Right, so second fastest horse. Who's so, got the fastest? Oh uh, yeah, that's a good question. Do you know I that? actually don't know that one. I know about that horse is famous though. Yeah. yeah. So um, these these are kind of ancillary items almost for characters. So you know, if we beat Lu Bu in a campaign game, in a battle in a campaign game, we'd have a chance of looting red hair, oh. and maybe we could put Cao Cao on red hair. And wow. you can only imagine how insulted Lu Bu would be <laughs> by an action like that. So he's going to absolutely hate you if you do that, uh, which is great. <laughs> now you have a you have a ton of factions. I don't know is it around eleven factions. Or? Yeah, that's right. Eleven table factions out of the box. Um, wow. And you know, a real range. Each of those factions is basically a character and, mm. and, and, and a ton of other characters in, in his faction and all the armies that they can kind of recruit and bring as well. So, um, uh, and, um, you know, we're approaching characters in a, in, a, in a very, very different way to how we've ever done it, done it before. Um, we're designing them with more depth, with more, with more features to them effectively. You know, they, they, they'll have personalities of their own, they'll have their own motivations. They'll have their own drives. They'll they'll have their own friends and rivals, rivals which they'll, you know, sort of they'll build and break relationships on their own without yeah. you doing things throughout oh. the game. You know, so if you've got two characters in a faction uh, who are kind of working together well, they might start bonding, and then there'll, there'll be a sort of bond of brotherhood between them. Um, and then, say, if you took those two guys into battle and one of them fell in battle, the other one you might lose control of him. He might tear towards the enemy, berserk style. Oh, wow. Just trying to take down as many guys as he can. So, That's so cool. Power so, of love. Yeah, right? exactly. Three exactly. Kingdoms, yeah. based off the novel. And yeah. Willie, I mean, uh, you, you illustrated some ways we're going to see those interactions there oh, about oh. characters that form bonds. Are we going to have uh, verbal interactions? Will those be changing over time? Yeah, absolutely. We'll, so based on the relationships, you'll see 
I mean, you'll see it in the battle here in a second, I'm sure, but the um, characters, they, they sort of spark conversation back and forth with each other throughout the course of a battle. So you'll see, you know, rivals would insult each other and, um, and friends will have a sort of healthy banter, you know, and it's um, and it all supports the idea that they've got relationships in the campaign games. Well, you talked about uh, the importance of being faithful to these characters that, mm. that people have loved and adding depth to them. And as I understand it, there's, there's actually two different game modes Two different ways to play, two different ways to remain faithful to yeah, yeah. the same characters. Can That's you tell right, us a little yeah. bit about uh, the, the romance versus the classic? Yeah, so our, our kind of default out of the box mode is, is romance mode. Um, because you know, a lot of what we're a lot of what we're depicting uh, was written about in the Romance of the Three Kingdoms in the 14th century, which is a very much a romanticized uh, history of events. Um, yeah, nice big charge. Ah, oh, it's just cool looking. Did you see the bodies? Oh, yeah, flying right about on. the place, yeah, yeah. Um, so, in, and in that mode, you know, your, your, your famous warriors like Lubu will be superhuman on the battlefield. They'll, they'll carve through, they'll be like a combine harvester going through a regular Yeah, the dramatic, infantry. powerful exactly, superhero that you exactly. want Exactly, and, and really kind of projecting that bravado and that power. So, um, but if you switch to uh, classic mode before you start a campaign, um, it'll be mu a much more kind of, uh, slightly more academic style of game. Yes. More like a, a, a traditional historical total war game. Where those those characters will be like regular generals, they'll be regular people. Hey, uh, how who brothers arrive? Yeah. Well. Does the uh, the classical mode for the campaign relate entirely to the battle interactions, or is that also going to be part of like what you have to do to maintain your army? You're actually going to have different. Is it a different interface between the two modes? No, not really. But but there is there are ways in which it differs in the campaign side of the game as well. So um, we have. Um, in the third, so in the third century, uh, the records of the three kingdoms were written, and yes. it, this is a very um, kind of elbow patches, spectacles on the nose. This <laughs> army fought this army at this place, and this many people were, were killed, and this much grain was taken from the city. You know, it's very much, uh, you know, the, the little the Sun Tzu of sort of. Yeah, exactly, yeah, and it's, it's all very factual. And it wasn't until you know 14th century that that, that um, the romance of the three kingdoms came along and, and brought these guys to life in a way they never have been had been before. Um, so one of the one of the differences uh, we have between the sort of classic mode and the romance mode in the campaign game is that um, we we build narrative events uh, that happen at key periods in the game. So. Um, a certain thing happened in, in say, 199 AD, uh, then we can depict that. We'll have a little thing pop up and say, oh, you know, a great, um, a great flood of this river plain happened and it washed the fields away and stuff like that. So you'll have events that will happen according to uh, factual history. Mm. But in the romance mode, those are more built around the narrative of the romance of the three kingdoms. Okay. So there'll be much more... Um, much more about you know epic rivalries between characters and that sort of stuff. So so the the, the feel of the game will be slightly different okay. between the two of them. Yeah. Cool. So I have one good question um, for people that haven't able to get into the Total War series. Mm -hmm. How inviting is this to new players? Um, as as uh, as inviting as we can make it. Really, we you know we're, we're going to stage mm -hmm. your um, your initial approach in the game and teach you how to use okay. the tools that you've got available to you. Well, how are, uh, how are these new players going to get their hands on the game, and where can they follow you for more mm -hmm. information? Um, well, it's out in spring 2019, so next year. I haven't got an exact date yet. Um, and do you have the question again? Uh, where can they follow <laughs> you? From? Hello and welcome to the first look at Total War Three Kingdoms. Today we're going to be playing through a single battle. It's 199 CE and the events of the Three Kingdoms era are well underway. The tyrant Dong Zhuo is long dead, murdered by his adoptive son Lu Bu. He's one of the greatest warriors of the period, who is now threatening to combine his strength with Wan Shu and overwhelm all opposition. However, Lu Bu sits in CRP, isolated from his would-be ally. The legendary commander Cao Cao senses an opportunity to strike Lu Bu down before his strength becomes too great. After months of long siege warfare and with the defenders starved of resources, Cao Cao now senses the time is right. Here, behind the walls of CRP, Lu Bu stands in the center, preparing to fight against the approaching march of Cao Cao. Here we are on the battlefield. The final assault is about to begin. We have Cao Cao, the legendary commander, leading his men into battle. We're going for a two-pronged approach. Cao Cao shall lead his forces through the breach, while Yi Jin will march his forces to the gatehouse and smash through and take the main concourse. But before we move forwards, we need to lay the groundwork for our assault. 
we're going to raise their walls to the ground. With that underway, we're going to move our heavy spear guard up towards the front gate for the attack on the wall. Let's take a look at these heavy spear guard. They're currently in the turtle formation, using their tall shields together, with the flag bearers in the center to protect from missile fire, which will greatly aid us in this assault. Lubu is holding his position in the center of CRP, waiting for someone worthy enough to fight. In Three Kingdoms, there are unique items which can be given to your generals. Here we see Lubu's horse and weapon are unique to him. But should he be slain, you could loot his items and keep them for yourself. Here we have one of our generals under Sao Sao. Different generals can recruit different kinds of units. These two are leading their forces together. Yi Jin is a guardian type hero, our combat master who excels in the heart of battle, tanking and soaking up damage. While our strategist is not great in a fight, he is incredibly useful for debuffing enemy units and allows us access to unique formation types. The gap on the left is now wide enough for us to make our great assault on the settlement. Cao Cao and his retinue are going to move up. Cao Cao himself is a commander, and they excel at buffing up nearby allied troops rather than wading into combat themselves. So we won't be seeing him being the first through the breach. He's too valuable for that. We will instead be pushing up the Yellow Dragons. They are being supported by the Azure Dragons, a hybrid heavy spear and missile infantry unit. They will first hold back and fire over the walls with their bows and once they've spent all their ammunition, they will join in on the front line. Let's move our heavy spears forward to climb the walls. Now is the time to press the attack. Getting the Azure Dragons firing, and now charging forwards with the Yellow Dragons. Is there a heart beating in that spider's body? Is there a brain inside that cavernous head? These heavy-hitting axe units are a formidable foe for anyone they go up against. They will make very short work of these spears. Let's check up on the center attack. The settlement is now on fire from the barrage of arrows, and our men are getting over the walls and getting stuck into the enemy. Our reinforcements have arrived. This huge mass of cavalry will be the perfect thing to break Ubu's men. We'll charge them into this spear infantry. They're going to knock these guys flying and destroy their morale. Our reinforcements are led by Zhehao Dun. He was shot in the eye by an arrow in battle against Ubu. He pulled it out, his eye still attached to the arrow, and proceeded to eat it. And we're going to get him out of the fight and head over to Ubu, who we're going to challenge to a duel. Duels are a new feature for Three Kingdoms, where the two heroes will duke it out in single combat until one either dies or retreats. Duels can help you single out an enemy combatant and take them out and turn the tide of battle. Together, we will put this chaos to an end! Reveal yourself. 
unfit to lead. Opponent, let us begin. 